Hello guys and welcome back to the Minecraft server. Do you know where we're going? I told you I wouldn't come here again. We weren't going to do any mining, but there's something I have to show you guys. Something very, very special. And it has everything and nothing to do with this. So let's go through and I've got a little surprise for you guys. And if this wasn't building enough Oh my goodness. What? So I did get this finished. I died again. I eventually got an Electra and I died and lost said Electra. So boo. But this the whole thing is hollowed out. It is ready to build an entire uh, mob farm here. We're going to do that in the next Let's Play. But I wanted to just show that off to you guys now before we go and take care of some business. We're actually going to do some prep for some of the design work that's going to be um, expected to start the design. We're going to work on the floor for the next Let's Play as well as getting that mob farm going. Um, we also have something special coming up with maybe the next Let's Play or the one after that. So I wanted to just to tease that to you guys. but. Um, I'm thinking that we're going to use a similar theme to this. We're going to use some sandstone. We're going to use the orange and obviously the bricks um, and the diorite. But the one thing that this is missing that I think would be absolutely important is quartz. And I think that as I think about Atlantis, I think that there's a lot of quartz. There's also going to be a lot of um, other pieces to this, but I wanted to start with the quartz. And so this is going to take a little bit of time to get, so I figured I would get some of the quartz on camera. Now, I will admit this, I've attempted in the past, whenever I was just doing this on my own, and no, not for any real special projects, that I would go for quartz. And it ended very badly. I don't know how else to say, except that it ended very, very, very badly. Um, I think I want to take this one. I don't want to go the distance. Let's try going this way. I'm not exactly sure where to go for quartz just because I know that they've done a lot of uh, mining, but at the same time, I don't want to go too far just because let's just take what's around here. I am going to use my efficiency or my fortune pick because for me, fortune picks are just like the obvious choice with mending already on it because that way we get the mending and so as you're mining out the quartz um, you don't have to worry about that you know what we could do instead of trying to get the little pockets here and there oh there's some right there um, i think what we might do is actually go all the way to the mesa nether um, entrance well that's why they didn't grab that um, but go over to the nether entrance and to get some way over there i'm afraid i'm going to <gasps> what was that oh geez oh, the hazards he spawned like right on me that's just baloney okay i need to take care of him and then i need to get down to the mesa because i feel like that would be a great place to start trying to take care of the quartz so i will be right back guys all right guys so we are at the mesa biome and someone has been busy welcome to grand gulch nether grand glutch uh we got it here but i would like to go out they're using a lot of oh no 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 okay good they also finished all the roofs, so literally there's no openings for that entire thing. That's really cool. If there's this, I bet I can just make... Yeah, let's just make a hole and we'll come back to it. Of course, I make a hole where there's not much at. There we go. Alright, so I'll leave that there in case I die. That's not supposed to be an omen see how it looks nice let's um get our coordinates take a quick screenshot of that you also notice we are on 1.10 there are polar bears there are all the other fun stuff 
Um, we'll probably investigate that sometime, but not today. And that is my nightmare right there. That is my nightmare. Let's just avoid that at all possible. I did not want to do that. All right. I have no idea where to go with all this. It'd be nice to get into an opening like that, but I don't know if that's possible. So let's just kind of boot, scoot, and boogie. Oh, I did not want to do that. Guess we can't go that way. So I want to talk to you guys about something. Um, something that we I've discussed before on if you guys listen to any of the other church mag um, mediums, we talk on the podcast about this idea of hustling. And it was a good conversation that we got to have. But one of the things that we didn't fully get into with the conversation is um, talking about hustling in the sense of hustling with the Sabbath. Now, first, and rightfully so, we didn't necessarily need to go into deep theological understanding of the process, um, but I wanted to get into that a little bit today. Now, before I go too far into the conversation about hustling, let me first say that the idea of hustling uh, that we talked about on the podcast in and of itself has some inherent concerns, I think is the best way of putting it. For me, my concerns was hustling has this mentality of I'm going to try to pull one over on you, like the 1930s, ah, I'm going to hustle you, see, and I'm going to try to get away with something, kind of a thing. It's, I get that that's not what people intend, um, but that's kind of how it can come across at times. I'm going to fill up on another rack so quick. Um, so that's concerning, um, but at the same time, I get why people say that. Now, also discussed on this is we've been against the idea of hustling for a really long time. Hmm. Actually, kind of like this one. Oh, that's just freaky. That, that just scares me. Um, so the idea of hustling is is something that we were against um, because Hustling is about the purpose, and, and that is a good thing. Um, but a lot of times when you hustle, you forget about the product and the end. And so we're not about necessarily hustling, but let's create something amazing. That doesn't necessarily mean don't put your best effort forth, um, but don't sacrifice family or quality of your product or um, the overall process for trying to make a few bucks or get your name be known or just trying to accomplish something great for the sake of accomplishing something great because those things have very significant limitations and can be really difficult to justify i don't, I don't know if i'm saying it correctly but go listen to the podcast um with church mag i know that it was labeled pretty well um but I wanted to talk to you guys specifically about the idea of hustling in the sense of the Sabbath. So let's take this understanding of hustling of let's give it all you got. Let's do everything you can um, to try to make the best product possible. Um, I am going to not worry about the discussion of fatherhood just because that was also part of the, a great conversation on the podcast. Um, but just know that family always comes first. And, and ultimately, this conversation that I wanted to have with you guys is, is that Family comes first, but after God. Um, so for me personally, I've given this a lot of thought. I did youth ministry, and so I had to have these conversations with teenagers whenever they were going out into life. Do I not have fortune on this pick? I have fortune three, and I'm getting so few of these. It's so weird. So I'd have these conversations with teenagers about where, where does work ethic start, and where does... Um, unhealthy work ethic begin and it, it's an interesting conversation because I am if you know me very well you know that my idea of work ethic is probably more than most people and I don't 
ever one bit want to sacrifice work ethic for anything because I think work, work ethic within a cultural mindset as well as a spiritual one go hand in hand. Um, I see God, I see Jesus whenever he was a carpenter and he um, did his job well. It talks about how he improved his stature among men and God and part of that aspect of among men has to be the fact that he just proved himself and his craft and and being able to truly invest in what he was doing with that obviously there's a huge purpose and a lot of foreshadowing in the sense of um, he's a carpenter and then he's going to be put on the cross which is something that he would have possibly um, have come across in his industry i'm assuming he didn't create them um, just because of who he is but at the same time just this mentality that you can do everything that you are supposed to for the kingdom um, but is an earthly manner so do the best job that you possibly can whatever your job is and i don't care what your job is i know i was a missionary for a long time uh, doing youth ministry and maybe that's your craft and i highly encourage you if that's something you want to consider to really consider it that being said it's not an easy thing to do and i would think long and hard about what your talents are um, i don't think that that's where i ever would have ended up but i think it was where i needed to be at that time doing youth ministry um, but at the same time it was also the reason that i found that i needed to be a counselor and so without being in youth ministry i would have never have discovered my ability to do counseling very well oh i hope these don't burn and so i think that there's a lot of benefits that god can bless you in a lot of ways of you doing your very best to um whoa to do whatever it is that you can for your craft is there not two of them okay let's just leave this area Ooh, i'm gonna get so lost i'm so glad i took that screenshot um and so i i want it just to be very utterly clear for real the spawn rate has to have increased with this Okay, we need to take care of you. I should have just brought a bow, but the lag's real. Come on. All right, so I'm not gonna get him. That's pretty evident. So I, I just wanna make sure I'm clear that I think that you need to have that strong work ethic. I think it's actually a, um, something that I would say is an expectation of Christians. Um, if you if you are someone that is lazy, um, that's actually in my book not something that a Christian should hold to, as far as a characteristic. Um, and you, you really do need to move that process forward. But what is too much? Um, I've already made the case on the podcast that too much includes um, it coming in the way of your family. Um, you need to work to take care of your family, but um, it should never get in the way of you being a father, a mother, a sibling, a child. Um, and I think that that should always be a huge focus. But what about God? And I'm going to have a little bit of a unique process on this with being a missionary and being having done stuff for, on Sundays. Um, but let's, first of all, just for the sake of argument, say that Sunday is the day for God, and there's a lot of conversation could be had with that. But the day, the day that you are worshiping, what does that look like for you? How in the world can you honor the Sabbath and continue to have a strong work ethic? Now, if is it bad to work on Sunday? Um, I do not believe so, though I do believe that it is a time of rest. Um, and so for pastors, this becomes really complicated in the sense that that is also your 
day of the week that you need to shine bright um, because other people have come to take their Sabbath and you are there to shepherd to allow for worship to start and so you need to first of all identify what Sabbath is I don't think it's necessarily Sabbath is something that has to happen on a certain day but it is a time that you are with God and you are resting I think it's time of worship and sometimes that worship is just through relaxing and, and taking time off. Um, I just completed a week of vacation. And for me, it was an extended Sabbath for myself. I have, um, my wife is someone that loves to go and do things. I am a person that loves to just sit around the house and relax and kind of mosey around, snack on different things, and just kind of take life as it comes. When we're going to do something, let's plan it out well, but if we're not doing anything, that's A-OK -okay as well, but that in and of itself is still a plan. Um, but I want to have a plan, and I want to relax. And for me, that's a, that's a Sabbath, and so you can just find rest. And so you can go to the zoo, you can be with your kids, you can do all those fun things and difficult things, but at the same time, you are just finding rest in that process. And I'm not, I wasn't working. I didn't vlog a single time. Um, I recorded some video for the vlog itself, um, but that was, let's just kind of capture memories as that process went. And then whenever I had a, a short period of time where I literally was doing absolutely nothing, no family activity or whatnot, we weren't playing Uno, we weren't grilling out, I would go and record just a little bit but it wasn't taking away from anything. It wasn't an obligation for me to have to fill. They're gone, good. Um, but I think it's hard to do that when you're a pastor because your Sunday is fairly occupied. And my own experience and the experience I heard from a lot of people, and so I know I wasn't alone, is that you are just drained afterwards and it becomes really tough whenever you have a family. And that is also their Sabbath. Unlike you, they didn't they weren't the ones that got hired for that job, but they are on a different footing with you. And so you really need to be intentional and be guarded with your time um, because you can come home just completely exhausted. Like anybody with a uh, job that is just demanding is you come home and you're just exhausted and all you wanna do is eat, sleep, and be with your family and so it gets a little tricky that being said I think that the idea of working on a Sunday and having that almighty hustle which is the whole point of this conversation is a problem and I want to say in American culture but I'm sure any culture can have this issue so I think it's an issue for a lot of people it's an issue for a lot of people that have this entrepreneur mindset. I know a lot of people that read Church Mag um, look for creativity, for inspiration, for ways to be a little bit more effective, to find just a little bit of refreshment, which is something I absolutely love about Church Mag. That's actually why I started reading Church Mag was I wanted to, I loved the nerdiness. Um, it's something that I always want to see be part of Church Mag now and forever, um, because it's actually why I started reading the blog before I started writing. And I just loved that mentality, that geek culture, that finding community together and the ability to um, find some commonality and not think, oh, I'm just the nerd that nobody else understands. And, it, and the idea of being a geek but before geek was popular and for me what truly is a geek like the idea of let's have a conversation about programming and so I don't blog I, I don't I try as much as possible to focus on that but there's this allure allure I don't know how to say that word that if you're not always hustling if you are not creating something amazing then you are falling behind and someone else is going to work just that much harder than you and they're going to take the reins from you and so you need to always be creating if you want to be the best 
and like I had just said, being the best at something or giving your all, your 100%, is a good thing. But what happens if it gets in the way of you worshiping God, of you not recharging your batteries, of you, of your relationship with God getting disconnected? Um, I just think of the idea of a relationship with my spouse or with my parents. Uh, the less time I actually spend talking to them, the less I truly understand who they are. And I've had times where... Um, it was about me. I know that whenever I was in a relationship with my wife and we were just uh, dating, that I was, it was everything was about her 100% and then we got married. And I would say we probably did the typical thing where we got married, we really enjoyed each other's time and then um, things became kind of normalized and things came, became, became typical. Not to say that she's boring in any way, but it was just a matter of a routine that we had gotten into. And I found myself taking advantage of that, not necessarily of doing anything bad, but of not doing anything good. And so I found myself not necessarily understanding who my wife was because she was obviously, she's ever changing and, and growing as a person. And all of a sudden, after I had seen all this, I kind of woke up and realized there's this woman who I've been in a relationship who has completely developed into this new person and character and she's much more confident in herself and much more capable. Um, she is an amazing cook. She is capable of managing a house um, many hundreds of miles away from her family and I kind of let it slip away. And I think sometimes we do that with God. Um, not maybe, I know that we do that with God. And so there's these times where we focus too much on ourselves. We focus on that creativity, that um, thing that there's a reason we do it. There's a reason that I blog and it's not just some selfish thing. It's there's God honoring in that. But just like the pastor who has a very holy reason that he does his job, he needs to have that time where he can kind of retreat. Um, I, one of my favorite passages in the scripture, is, there's a uh, chapter in Psalms that talks about the str uh, strong tower and this idea that we need to take refuge, that we need to go and tend to our wounds, that we need to go get refreshed and revitalized, and that we really need to kind of just rest. And for me, whenever I hear someone talk about the Sabbath, that's how I picture it myself, is this idea that I need time to just recoup. And for me, that includes not being alone. Because if it's just me, and I'm going to use a little analogy from my devotional with Nehemiah. That's what we call cross-marketing. If I, if I uh, take that analogy where they're constantly working on rebuilding the walls of Jerusalem, they can't just rebuild because there's people attacking. And yet he realizes they need to be safe. And they need to be capable and so they are constantly pushing for there to be guards and at the same time for people to just build just to do what is holy and what is god honoring and so there's times where they're guarding and there's times where they are just building and so there's a this strong connection at least within nehemiah where we actually need to make sure that we're with others that can guard us while we are taking our Sabbath. Sometimes that means that they're taking their Sabbath too, but sometimes that just means that we need a pastor walking alongside us. And that's actually my own personal approach. That's how I did Sabbath, was I just made sure that my Sabbath was, we would go to on Saturdays um, to a college ministry where I wasn't on. I would just go as a person. Nobody knew who I was. I could just kind of blend in. And so that's how I did my Sabbath as a youth pastor. So if anybody's ever curious about how they could do that a little bit better, not that that's going to work for you, but maybe that's an idea for you to try out. But this, but this mentality of wanting to serve well, of wanting to create something amazing and grand, even for 
the mentality of doing it because God has placed this on your hearts and you know this is a calling that you've had from him does not give you the justification to not have your Sabbath. Um, I've heard people have conversations where they say, it's just for a season, it's okay, keep working hard, it's just for a season. And I'll be honest, I 100% disagree with that. Um, if you are skipping your Sabbath because it's just for a season, then you're doing it wrong. Um, I don't ever encourage anybody to skip their Sabbath. It doesn't necessarily mean you have to sit there and not do anything and just kind of stare at other people and eat already pre-made food, but it needs to be a time where you are developing that relationship with um, God. It's, in some sense, it's a date night with God, if I can make a terrible analogy for that. And so you, gosh, date nights, you can sometimes skip. For me, the Sabbath, you do not skip. Not ever, not once. Um, and, and I would love to hear what you guys have to say about that. Do you disagree? Do you think that it's okay for a season to miss church? And not necessarily even just miss church because I was just on vacation. I haven't been to a worship center for the last two weeks because both Sundays we were literally traveling. Um, but did you miss Sabbath? Did you miss your time with God? Um, I don't necessarily talk about this with anybody, including people online, um, but my time with God is something that's just for me. It's just something I hold to. And so I constantly am diving into scripture and trying to just understand what God could speak into my life and what he could say for me in the in the time that I'm in and I don't think that I could do what I do without that regular time I spend with him um, people are always asking for the idea of success not necessarily to me but I just see blog post after blog post of the number one question I'm asked is how do you keep doing how do you keep moving forward and I think that that's I think that that's a key thing, especially for Christians. I think it's a key thing for anybody, is to take that Sabbath time. Others would call it meditating or um, trying to recharge your batteries or make sure you get enough sleep or whatever it is. But I think it's something that you need to be very intentional about. Um, for me as a Christian, it's it's a Sabbath. It's something where, ooh, it's where I am actually in Scripture and prayer and community where I am. I'm developing my relationship with God. This is my thoughts. I'd love to hear what you guys have to say on the conversation. What do you think? Is is my thoughts too extreme? Am I completely missing the point of the Sabbath? Because I know there's a lot of different theologies in this. I know I'm wasting this. I have six double chests of the stuff and I want to get more nether quartz. Um, what would be your alternative? If you disagree, I'd like to hear that too. I don't want you to just say I disagree and then kind of let that be. What is your thoughts? Like, if you disagree, what do you disagree towards? We've generated some new terrain and I haven't seen any of the magma blocks. I'm kind of shocked. I know that we we have a huge map here and it only comes up on new generated terrain. So, I do anticipate farming it when I see it. But I've not seen it yet. Hmm. And I don't know how we... I want to use the bones somehow, the bone block, but I have no idea how. I'm not very good at creativity with that. So, Sabbath, hustle, where do you stand on it? Do you think it's okay to work on the Sabbath in general? Do you think it's okay to take an entire week and not take a Sabbath? Um, and if you agree or disagree, why? I'd like to hear just a just a general conversation because this is something that is um, actually very hot topic right now um, because there's a lot of people that are very influential in these kind of work ethic type conversations that are kind of flipping sides. They, would, they originally would say, I'm all for 
uh, strong work ethic and sometimes you just need to hustle 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 and now they despise that word completely and they don't even want to use the word um, I'm kind of gonna just stick to my guns unless somebody can convince me otherwise but it's gonna take a lot to convince me um, yeah I'd like to hear what you guys have to say we got, I got a very intelligent audience um, we've gotten a very intelligent audience I forget that this is church mag um, so tell me what you guys think and I will see you guys next time. Bye-bye. 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 See ya.